Hey folks, Professor Finn here, and today I would like to discuss very briefly with you um, something that I saw on my Facebook timeline last evening that I uh, reshared and um, asked my students who follow me on social media to please review uh, the scenario and let's discuss this in class so that we can determine, you know, how and if and why this happened and what things we can do to prevent it. So for those of you who uh, do not know who I am, I am the program coordinator of funeral service education at Miami-Dade College. I am a licensed funeral director in Balmer in the state of Florida, and I have been in practice for over a decade, and I've been an educator since 2012. Now, um, I am not a medical doctor. I am not a uh, virologist, an epidemiologist, a pathologist. I am a funeral director with degrees in music and in law. And that and $7, uh, with my opinion, will get you a cup of your favorite beverage at a world famous uh, and very popular coffee shop. So I'm what you would call an internet expert uh, by all outward appearances with slightly more credentials than the average candy salesman. So take my opinion for what is worth. I would like to think that I am a competent uh, embalmer who knows not to lick their dirty gloves considering that I teach the cl clinical classes here in Miami. And let's go ahead and look at this thing so we can see what's going on. So uh, this is the post that uh, appeared last night. I'm going to read it for you. My fellow morticians, a local mortuary tested a body for COVID. This decedent had been dead for 18 days. The swab came back with a positive and active culture. Please, please, please stay safe. This shit is no joke. Now, we will assume two things. One, that the body was professionally embalmed by an embalmer of some competence uh, that has, does this for a living and is experienced. Um, if you wish to assume the body is unembalmed, then it should obviously be no surprise that a microorganism is living on past the death of its host because microorganisms do that, uh, whether it's the indigenous flora of your intestines or the diseases uh, that may exist in your lungs like tuberculosis. We know that you dying in and of itself does not stop these things. So we have to assume that the worry here is that a body that is professionally embalmed that has been disinfected by a competent embalmer is still uh, presenting a hazard to the community. So let's go ahead and look at something. Um, this image I've taken off of Wikipedia. The author who put this on Wikipedia was a person by the name of Arcadian. I'm using this through a Creative Commons license. I'm not seeking any sort of monetization or anything like this. I don't wish to make any money. This is simply a public service announcement. And I would like to thank Arcadian for having this on Wikipedia so that I could use it for this educational purpose. Uh, attributions will be in the um, in the description below, as well as a disclaimer regarding the uh, opening picture, which is a parody of Bethesda Softworks' uh, Fallout series that I have photo edited with my name in celebration of the uh, Wuhan coronavirus pandemic. So let's take a look at this. Now, we have a picture here strictly of uh, the nasal and oral cavity. And my, um, my overall um, assumption is when they are swabbing, and I've seen several graphics out there, uh, that they go all the way back here, they go all the way back here, uh, and I'm using Blackboard Collaborate, so please forgive the rudimentary uh, illustrations and whatnot because I do not have the full suite uh, of software that I would normally have at my office. And this is where they're likely swabbing so that you can, uh, so, so that we can test for novel coronavirus. And so here are some assumptions that some people are taking this as like, oh my God, Novel coronavirus is uh, not being inactivated by mortuary grade uh, disinfectants or by formalin solution. And let me set your hearts at ease. That is absolutely untrue. That is patently false. Uh, it is nothing more than a coronavirus. And in fact, we know that uh, household products such as Lysol, bleach solution, uh, alcohol, will happily kill this microorganism. So if uh, anyone wishes to uh, debate the uh, efficacy of a mortuary grade disinfectant against a household disinfectant, you know, by all means, have fun in the comments. I'm not going to address that. But we're going to assume that mortuary grade disinfectants are at least as effective as a household grade disinfectant that you can buy at your favorite retail store. So what is happening here? Well, it is common, and most professional embalmers will topically 
uh, disinfect the body during primary disinfection. And what this means is they're going to take a spray bottle with a uh, fully concentrated mortuary disinfectant. And there's a variety in the market, and I don't mean to sell anyone's products, but for the most part, I'm familiar with two uh, catalogs of product, and that is uh, the Pierce catalog and the Dodge Chemical Company catalog, uh, of which uh, Pierce sells a product called Santa Spray, Dodge sells a product called Dis Spray. And at the end of the day, these are mortuary grade disinfectants. And these are droplet sprays. The goal here is is that you will spray the body so that anything on the exterior of the body will uh, stick to the body. And this disinfectant will work over the course of 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, because it is generally an alcohol base, it will reduce the body temperature quickly, thus shocking and killing most microorganisms. Uh, the rest of it is that it will actually wet them down so that when you do the next step, which is bathing with a multi-spectrum um, uh, mortuary grade soap, that you will then clean the exterior of the body. Now, part of that is you will take said spray and you will spray the interior of the mouth um, and then clean the mouth uh, sufficiently using uh, cotton with a spring forcep or cotton maybe with a, uh, with a locking forcep so that you can adequately clean the mouth um, and then spray it with a disinfectant. You'll take said disinfectant, introduce it into the anterior nair, and then you will also spray the upper oral cavity. And with any luck, this should be sufficient to get this in all places. The body is going to be um, lying uh, typically on some type of preparation table so that uh, gravity will help the uh, aerosol spray get into these, uh, these areas. Now, one other thing that we can do as practitioners, uh, just to be a bit more effective, is after we are done cleaning, is maybe take some saturated cotton once again on a spring forcep or a locking forcep, and then swab out these areas, which you see me doing here in uh, in orange. And what this will do is this will make sure that uh, we are trying to get as much as possible. It's going to be very hard for us to do this uh, in the nasal cavity. This is not something that we normally do. But at a minimum, what we should be doing is taking saturated cotton, um, packing the nostrils with it uh, so that we are forming a barrier in this nasal cavity so that nothing is going to be coming out. Now, these, uh, with me coloring here, this is for, um, this is for effective sight. Uh, obviously, we're not going to be taking, you know, two and a half feet of cotton, slamming it into the upper portion of someone's nose, but we are going to, you know, put something in there that will block the area that's saturated and disinfectant so that nothing comes out. And uh, we may do as a consideration the same exact thing here in the, uh, in the back of the oral cavity. Put some saturated cotton so that we are, uh, disabling anything from coming out via the lungs, tuberculosis, pneumonia, et cetera, uh, as well as anything maybe dripping down and could be aspirated by uh, the, um, the articulation of the body. When we go through and we finish uh, injecting our preservative solution, whatever that preservative solution might be, um, we know formalin solution will kill this just nicely. So uh, fact of the matter is, when we, this will not be affected for the most part by cavity embalming because when we are cavity embalming, this is not going to be getting into the back of the throat. If you're getting into the back of the throat, folks, we're getting something morticians called purge, which means you're going to end up packing the throat anyways towards uh, the end. So let's fast forward to the end. We are all done. A couple things we can do is we can remove, okay, we can remove the, um, uh, the saturated packing here. We can either take the saturated packing up here out or just push it back into the cavity as uh, one of these, uh, one more thing to kind of uh, be a preventative measure. And then what we should be doing is either replacing um, this saturated stuff um, with um, newly saturated material during the period of storage, which is what I would probably recommend. Um, and then prior to uh, dressing, cosmetizing, and presentation for uh, services, uh, those of you that are having services, uh, you would likely take these out and repack with clean cotton. Or you could simply go ahead and pack with saturated cotton, then uh, repack with clean cotton. The, the issue is, is you don't want anything dripping out of the nose, obviously, for uh, presentation purposes. But here in the back, you could you know, take saturated cotton, pack the, uh, the trachea, um, and the pharynx, and then put clean cotton on top. Uh, one, that's something that you should be doing generally anyways to prevent any sort of purge issue, uh, but just to prevent against anything coming out. So is it a surprise that you would have a swab testing positive for coronavirus back here? No, not likely, especially if you're doing business as normal. Um, should you take some extra precautions like I've explained here? Well, that'd be a good first step. You may do what you want. It is your business model. It is your toy. You may play with it as you see fit. 
So I hope you found this, um, th th this video informative. Uh, this is not intended to be a substitution for you contacting appropriately trained individuals at uh, various organizations. I do recommend that you do contact uh, those of you who are practitioners. Contact your chemical companies. Get in touch with your uh, trade embalmers uh, or the embalmers that your chemical companies have on retainer to provide